Let me tell you how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? I was laying in bed and I was thinking to myself, you know what? I want to be more like Tristan. So I thought about launching 10 new Facebook groups, reading about 15 books, um, maybe get back into selling million dollar real estate. Why not? Well, I got exhausted just thinking about it. I went back to sleep. <laughs> so I just got out of bed, been sleeping all morning because you exhausted me thinking about being like you. Did you did you have good dreams at least? No, it was it was very tossy. I was sweating. <laughs> it was like more of a nightmare. So all right, I love it, Daryl. All right, we're live into both communities here. Let's talk to Daryl Davis on how to become a power agent in real estate. He wrote the book. That's the first That's right, baby. book I read coming into real estate. Who knew that Daryl would become my friend years later? I, I think he's, Daryl, you're my friend, right? So, well, Sure. Okay, there you go. He said, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you're along with 5,000 5, other That's people so Facebook good. thing that I never met before. That's the best. I know, dude. We still haven't met, man. I know we've got we once the pandemic is uh, and we are not worried about dying. Yeah. Then yes, we, <laughs> then we can then we can break bread. Yes. All right. So look, you wrote the book, and yep. I've read it two times. I have it. I have notes all over the book, and it, it really helped guide me into understanding what this whole real estate world was truly going to be about. Because when I got my real estate license, I was like. All right, now what? Because I'm not using anything that I learned there. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like a whole nother level. And, and then you wrote this book to kind of itemize the things we're supposed to be doing. But it applies to so many different levels of agents, not just people coming in. You can literally pick this book up and level up from doing things in this book still. So when we're talking about how to become a power agent in real estate, what do you... What do you gravitate towards talking when it comes to this? What are the topics? So, um, well, you know, there's, um, in my opinion, there's, there's two aspects of real estate. There's the listing and selling skills. Actually, there's three. There's the listing and selling skills of real estate, like prospecting the listing appointment, what to say, when to say, and how to say when you're face to face with people. Then there is the attitude aspect. Because if you don't, if you don't got the right attitude, you know, you could show somebody, you know, you show somebody how to make a hundred grand a year, but if who they are is 30 grand a year, all they're going to make is 30 grand a year. So the attitude aspect, right, is so important. And then the third aspect is the business side, running the business like a business. And um, so those are the three separate skill sets. And so with our power agents, this is, and this is why we called it, you know, I, I, we didn't even get a chance to talk because, you know, I got to make an appointment to even like see you. You're so busy all the time. But it's true. But I said, um, you know, what we wanted to do with this, because you and I started doing these monthly sessions, I thought, let's do a series called How to Become a Power Agent. So each session that you and I do this conversation, I can teach a specific thing that we teach our power agents in our coaching program. So I thought we'd talk about the marketing plan, 2021 marketing plan that I got some slides I'll share with you if you want. Dude, for sure. Let's do it. And one of the things you brought up as the three things, which yeah. I think is a challenge for most agents. And it was a challenge for me until, I mean, look, I still have challenges with it here and there. Is it treating this like an actual business? Mm -hmm. Because we, we forget that we're running a business. It's not just something that is a one man show, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that, that's a big challenge for real estate agents. Well, and I, I think the reason why that is too, and, I, and, I, and for me, Tristan, I think I had a breakthrough in this myself personally, just recently, is um, that sometimes we can have the, the, the business um, override the, um, the, the feeling, the attitude of what we do and why we do what I'm, I'm not saying this very well. When we are passionate, I said something to our coaching students Monday, I'll give an example of what I'm trying to say in a very poor way. I said to our students on Monday, I said, if you made it through this pandemic, Mm -hmm. you are already special because this has tested so many of us this year. And if you are still in real estate, I don't care what your production level is. If you're still in the game, 
that says something special about each and every agent. Wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent, man. It, it's, it's a very true statement. I think you, you also saw a lot of agents give up really early on. Yes. Right. Yep. Thinking that this, this was over and it just shows that any, any type of business you're in, whether it's real estate or anything else, yep. the first thing we have to talk about is mindset. Uh, absolutely. And that goes back to the, the other thing I was trying to say is that when you are, what, what I find for us is that when you're really committed to serving and not selling, when agents have a passion to make a difference in people's lives, when agents take the attitude like who I am is committed to making a difference in people's lives and real estate is merely the tool that I have chosen to be the vehicle to have that happen, when that shift happens for people, that's when possibility, opportunity, and their business explodes. And I think that helps serve people in looking at and running it like a business. Because if you are about serving, not selling, when you are about helping other people, you have to step up your business skill set in order to accomplish that. True. You need to know how to manage your money, manage your business, so you can serve and help more people. Does that make sense? So anyway... Do you want me to show these slides or? Let's do it, man. You've got the best slides. You have the, an amazing team that that has these graphics and design work that, that just makes it easy for us to, to really interact with, with these graphics. See what I mean? This is nice, man. Oh, that's your book, How to Become a Power Agent in Real Estate. You know what you need to do, Daryl? And you well, already know this, okay? Tell Daryl. me. You need to update this book with like a new chapter or two and then just re-release it because it's, I went through it the other day again. I'm like, I can't believe that a lot of this stuff is so relevant because a lot of agents forget that we're salespeople at the core, right? Yes, you know, it's funny you'd say that because that was, that's one of our 2021 goals is to make some additions to it, make some tweaks to it and bring it, you know, cause it is an old book, it's, but, but it's the basics. Like you said, people even reading it today love it, but we can add and tweak it. So yes, we're going to do a, hopefully this year we will do a new release. Well, dude, when you do that, let's make a, a big deal about it in lab kits because I, I'd love to push your book. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So let me, so what we're going to do on this topic, let me see what, if this thing's going to work with me. So to, to, uh, 2021 marketing calendar for success. And um, which by the way, Tristan, I know you've asked this. So I'm going to just push it up front right now. This is our Power Agent membership. If people want to just take a, a screenshot or write that down, DarylSpeaks.com for it says trial. I'm going to mention something. We're going to do something special for all the Labco people. But um, so what I want to do is let's go over some ideas for 2021 as far as marketing thoughts and how to increase your business. So here's the first thing I want to say to everybody is make sure you have money at least six months of money, if you're going to do any kind of campaign that costs money, like mailing campaign stuff. One of the mistakes, Tristan, as you know, people make is they, they, they have a good month. They take some of their money, they start doing mailings, but, but they don't go the distance in the mailings. The thing about a campaign, it's got to be consistent and it's long-term. Uh, Direct Marketing Association, they did a study on this, that people need to see the same message six to eight times before to register and before they'll take action. So if we do go to mailings with that, for you to see any kind of return on a campaign, you've got to mail out at least six or eight times to the same group of people consistently before you'll start to see any return on that. And some agents don't, aren't funded. So make sure you're funded to do that. And the second thing is you use contact management software to kind of manage your farm area, what you're doing. I'm real big on the CRM. Which CRM are you guys using, Tristan? We're using Follow Up Boss on okay. the farming side, only because it allows us to scale and um, and chime as well. What what are you currently using, Daryl? Well, we have for our power agents, and it's this is just an example because they all do this. We use Power Builder, but that is something that Tristan we had written just for our power agents because we took a lot of our marketing material and we put it in that software. So, Ooh, yeah, that, so we actually launched this this year where power agents don't have to import the stuff. It's all part of their CRM. So, oh. but it's a crucial. Here's the message. The message is you got to make sure that you have a CRM. Then you want to develop your mailing list. 
Now I know you, Tristan, have aligned yourself, which I'm so happy to hear about Red X because I believe they are the bomb on a lot of different levels. And what Red X has is this thing called GeoLeads. And what happens with GeoLeads, you can type in an address and then say, give me a, a list of all the people around that address and you can set up certain criteria. And then it gives it to you in an Excel file, which then you can take that list and import it into your CRM. So if somebody's going to start in 2021 a marketing campaign that they haven't done or they want to redo it, their farm area, this is how I suggest to do it is work with Red X, get the geo leads, download the list, put it into whatever CRM that you're doing. Yeah. Dude, that's brilliant. And I just texted Curtis Fenn and I said, why, why haven't we done a webinar with Daryl and Red X? What's <laughs> going on? We should absolutely do that. You know, Curtis knows that my specialty is, is the Fizbo's expires making phone calls. And I love Red X. I talk about them all the time. So we should, the three of us, that would be awesome to do that. Now, next thing is, and I think you've got something like this. Correct. We're going to go to it in a second. I'm going to give an example, writing out a campaign. So if you're going to do a farming campaign, a self-promotion campaign, what you should do is graph it out. Now, this is what we give our power agents where it says, all right, here's some months at the top and over on the left side is what is the activity. And so what you want to have it look like is a little sprinkle saying, all right, I'm going to be touching my people with social media or, or this marketing update CMA. And so in other words, plan out 2021. Don't do it haphazardly, right? Now I think don't you, you or was it a social media campaign? Is that what I saw? So you had a great form, Tristan, that was out there. Help me remind me what it was. Um, I have both. I have one that's a social media one and one that I we've outlined over the years for mailing here. I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen with you. It's, it's very similar to yours. You have it looking much nicer than mine though. So don't judge me on my lack of design. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I, 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 I you got to pay your people better. That's the problem. <laughs> Stop being so cheap. All right, let here me we see. go. All right. This is the farming outline and the number before it are the times that we send it out in a year. So six times local market stats, yep. four times things to do in the spring. Then I break it down a little bit more below yep. you see here, yep. two times a month because we mail out two times a month. Yep. And then I go in a little deeper as to what each of them would have detail wise. I love it. So that's what we've done. So very similar to yours, man. I love your graph. You just check off the right ones. Well, yeah, I just, I just made it, mine look prettier, but, um, but no, this, that, that was great. Are you going to share that with people in the thing somehow? Yeah, I'll drop it in there. Drop sure. it in there. All right. Next thing is, all right, let's go on to where am I? I got to click on this thing here. Okay. We're going to go to this. All right. Write out your campaign. Finally, next thing is I'm going to encourage people, Tristan, to think about giving back in 2021. You know, 2020 has been um, an interesting year. It's been a challenging year. Um, I got to say, I feel like in some respects, it has divided uh, people more. And in some respects, has brought them together. I think as real estate professionals, we need to work extra hard at bringing people together. And um, part of that is consider doing some kind of cause. Uh, you'll see like on the screen, I have a, an example, like if you did a promotional flyer saying, Hey, listen, uh, for every deal that I do in 2021 or this quarter or whatever, I'm going to donate X amount of dollars. And uh, I'll give you, I'm going to tell you something that we're doing, Tristan. We have, well, we, uh, you know, there's been so much about COVID, this COVID, 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 but what, what just dawned on me, Tristan personally, just is that. This is percentage reporting, sometimes often not eating enough. You'll look at 2018. If you look at that last column there, where it says zero to 24,000 all the way to yeah. the right. Yeah. Last, uh, two years ago, 11% of the people didn't feel like they had enough food, but this year with COVID, it's 28%. Oh, that's insane. And if you look every level of income, even people making over a hundred grand, right? You'll see an uptick, even though it says 1%, they, we round off the fractions. So people are, here's you, my point. What, that, what? what is this? Um, where is this sourced from? I'd like to like dig in deeper, dude. I didn't even know this. Yeah, dude, uh, I'm going to get you the uh, PDF on this. Julie, yeah. are you there with me? Yeah. Do me a favor. Sarah uh, got the PDF on this. 
Can you have her share it with Tristan um, or clip it to you and then you put it into this, this chat here? This is nuts. Now, let me show you one other one, Tristan. This is um, the, the, the food secure insecurity percentage reporting that sometimes they often do not have enough to eat. Look at 2005, 2019. Look at how it just went through the roof this year. So here's my point with this COVID thing, there's food banks that are going empty, man. There's, there's, wow. there's, a, there's a real food insecurity. Pot. And, and I got to tell you, this just dawned on me because it's all COVID, COVID, COVID. But this is a real problem for people. So here's what we're doing as an example, Tristan. Our power agent membership is a $5 trial for 30 days. So 100% of everybody that gets into our trial as a power agent, 100% of the, that money is going to go to Feeding America. And we're doing this for the oh, next wow. Quarter. Now, we may do this for the next quarter, but right now I want to create a sense of urgency for people. The next 30 days, that's what we're going to do. But we'll probably will extend it, right? Because we want to try and do our part um, to make to help people, to serve people, especially when you're financially doing well, you want to give back to others. And that's oh, the yeah. message, right? Imagine if the million realtors all picked up some kind of cause in 2021, what kind of impact could we have in the world by us all doing a little something to give back to help serve other people, right? That's beautiful. Now, this over here, let me go through. Here's my idea what I'm going to share with you. I don't know if we'll have enough time to go through it all, but I'll get through as much as I can. What I did, Tristan, is I figured I looked at each quarter and here's a slew of ideas from a marketing standpoint. Here's what you can do in first quarter, second quarter, third. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to start with the first quarter, January, February, March. What an agent can do to market themselves in the first quarter of 2021 is, first of all, I love this one, and that is sending out the HUD closing statement um, forms to the buyers and sellers of any transactions they did this last year. As you know, this is a, a, a tax write off these closings, right? The buyers, the sellers, they probably have a copy of the form, but they lost it. So what an agent should do is they should make, take a copy of that HUD form, send it to all of the buyers and sellers involved in all the transactions the past year, put a cover letter saying, hey, listen, congratulations on buying your house. I hope you're loving it. Here is a copy of your HUD statement from the closing. Take this thing, give it to your accountant because you got a lot of tax savings there. So that's one thing to do right off the, the bat. Yep. Second thing is consider doing a mailing campaign and kicking it off this year because, you know, FISBOs and expireds, it's, it's in some markets, Tristan, as you know, it's, it's really shrunk. Inventory shrunk across the board, but even in that category. So what we got to do is start planting the seeds. I'll give, for instance, one of the things agents can do is a newsletter. Uh, you love, listen, you said you love my design. Let me show you how, how beautiful my people. This is, this is, we have, this is my company. They design all these, these newsletters. Is this Damn, not beautiful? Man. It's beautiful, right? I love that. It's, that's awesome. I got, I got it. I got it. I'm so blessed, Tristan, with the people I got. I just, they, really, they're just, they're just very talented people. So one of the things that you can do is a newsletter campaign. The other thing is do an introductory letter to the farm area, introduce yourself. By the way, for people that are watching this, Tristan, here's my thought. Remember what I said about six to eight times people have to see your message. Yep. Now, if you want to speed up the ROI, return on your, on your investment, instead of doing a monthly mailing piece to a farm area, in the first two months, do it every two weeks. Yeah. So in other words, you're bombarding them up front. Bada bing, bada bing. You say, here, hello, here I am. Here, here's my definition of self-promotion. Have people know your name, your face, and what you do for a living. So if in the beginning you hit them hard a lot, right, over a two-month period, then you taper off to once a month. And that is a beautiful system. You will get a higher, you'll start getting leads a lot quicker. Agreed on that. 100%. All right. This is another thing. You can, if, if you don't want to do newsletters, you can do simple mailings. I got three letters that we give to our power agents. The first letter is, hey, I'm delighted to announce I just sold a home. Here's the next letter. Hey, here's all the homes that have sold in the subdivision. And then the other letter could be, and of course, you put your face on it and your company letter. Here's an update of what's happened in your market in the last 30 days. Here's what I love, Tris, about these letters. These are three letters. You get a mailing house and you just rotate the three letters. So if you don't want to do a newsletter and deal with that, three letters in month three, after you've done the third letter, you go back to the first one. 
So what you're doing is you're just taking these three letters and changing the address and updating the information. It's a real simple, simple campaign because the whole point is you want to have people know your name, face, and what you do for a living. So you stick it on the letterhead like that. I love that. All right. Next thing is you want to do a call to your farm area. When you call your farm area, you want to, you want to offer something of value. Like, I don't know if you can see the first, it says over to the left value option, number one, then it says value option number two. So the value option number one is, Hey, I wanted to let you know, one of the things that we're giving the neighbors is a free report on something. We've seen these free reports, like how to sell your house or how to have curb appeal, blah, blah. So a little report, a little gift you're offering to people. Another thing you can do is an over the phone market analysis, which that's the one on the right. What I love about this concept about over the phone market analysis, you're telling people, listen, I'll tell you how much your house is worth over the phone. You just answer a few questions about your bedrooms, your bath, the condition, blah, blah, blah. Then I go back to the computer, do a scientific market analysis. Then I'll call you back. Can, are you interested? Now, what's good about this, Tristan, you have a lot of people who will say yes to that because it's over the phone. You know, it's a hot market. This is a good, everybody should, this is what I believe, Tristan, and everybody should get this message out. I don't know about you. I check my stock portfolio on a pretty fairly consistent basis. I, I like to know what I'm doing, all right? So I think everybody should have that done to their home once a year minimum. They should know how much their house is. Just like you go to a physical to the doctor once a year to get a checkup, you should have that done on your house. Okay. And we should be communicating that message to people. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Hold the how-to webinar. How many webinars do you do like this uh, i do probably seven eight nine ten a week nice. I, I mean I'm, that's not including the other stuff that we do right I, I know i know i i don't know how you do this you're not you know what daryl on this how a hold a how-to webinar for sellers Yes. This is the perfect example of taking this and taking it to social, like Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, and now Clubhouse. Can you imagine doing one of these on Clubhouse? Oh, Maybe. man, that's awesome. Now, one of the things, I don't know if we want to get into telling people this, but there's a way to do face, like to stream it out. You've used, uh, what is it, Vine Vineyard or Stream? Well, we use StreamYard zoom and ecamm live ecamm live is really good oh um, i didn't know about this now e take a look at ecamm live ecamm live allows you to to throw out whatever you're recording live uh -huh. Either you can record it or you can do it live into facebook youtube and all these other places as well so um, you can technically record it but it could look like it was done live uh, well Ecamm will allow you to play it live. The recorded one, if you want to take a look at the ability to record something and push it out, yep. then you want to get one stream one. live. One oh. stream. I'll send you the link. I'll put the link right over here. Put the link in over here. And Julie, uh, just grab that. And Julie, did you get that PDF yet? I put it in the chat. You did. Okay, good. Because I didn't see it. All, All right. right. There, I put it in the chat. Try that one if you want to record something and then pretend that you're running it live everywhere. That's what you would use. What I love for agents to do sellers workshops or having like guest speakers uh, as part of it, like how you do with these in, in a sense, I usually have the one. Ooh, but what's so good. What's that? That dude, I don't even know why I didn't think of that. Why not apply what we do for lab coats? Well, but to real estate, this is brilliant. Exactly, exactly. And what, what's good for agents is that they will position themselves as an expert by doing this, you know, doing some kind of seminar for homeowners about how to sell your house in today's market. Here's another idea, doing smile stops for clients. Now, let me explain what a smile stop is. And the reason we call them smile stops, Brian uh, uh, Buffin, he'll call them um, Popeyes, for example. We call them smile stops because there's an acronym for smile. It's about service. You want to make people feel good, but, 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 but it's the same concept. And so we created like all these different little doodads and times of year where you can drop off stuff for past clients. So we got a, but listen, we got like over 500 forms, flyers, and checklists that we give our students. But I'm going to show you one that I really like because it simplifies it. Dude. We, we created this, this actually Julie created this shout out to Julie is every month. There's just an idea. If you want to stop by to a client's house, 
for example, I'm going to zoom in on January and February. Like January, you get those fortune cookies, say, wishing you good fortune in the new year. <laughs> you see that there? <laughs> <laughs> The next one, the heart-shaped box of chocolate. I love my clients. Happy Valentine's Day. So the little cute things you can drop. Now, you shouldn't do every month something because you'll go broke. But we like to give agents ideas, like maybe every quarter you do a smile stop. Here, here, you know, one smile stop per quarter. Here's another one. Love this. Interview spotlight local businesses. Let me show you, Tristan. One of our power agents, she did this so successfully. Kat Ryan, she's actually out by you in California. Now, what I want you to see, she interviewed these two uh, restaurants, okay? And here's the part that I want you to focus on. Sure. Look at the number of likes that she got on the first one on the left. You'll see it says 82 plus one is 83, right? 14 yeah. comments, five shares. But watch this. Look at the date at the top underneath her name. It says December 10th. Okay? Oh, wow. Now, look at December 11th. The yeah, next back day, to back. back to back, and look at how many likes. Dude. So here's my, listen, you know, Tristan, because you know social media. If you post something back to back like that and you still get that kind of likes and participation, like, and look at the number of comments on the second one and the shares. What More that tells, comments. Yeah, exactly. What that tells you, your audience loves it. That's what that tells you. Yeah. And I love how she said it. And, and if I look at her first thing, she said, greetings from Cat's Corner. Like she even calls it, she gave it a name, Cat's Corner. Uh, please support our local businesses. We want them to still be here long after COVID is gone. So there's a, a community service message in what she's doing. Spotlight. This is why I think in, in this pandemic, realtors, we are the leaders. We need anybody on the front line and helping the communities in any way we can. This is a perfect example. Let me give you some questions that you can do an interview of local businesses. What do you like best about the community? This is this this question is a great question. Here's another one. Why did you start this business? Boy, oh boy, I love this because that gives you a little behind the psychology and the personal aspect of the business owner. Why did they do this? What's their passion? What's their why? Why did you choose this town of all the places you could? Oh, well, I was born here. I went to high school here. This type of question connects the owner with the community. How are you making out during these challenging times? Most likely not too good is gonna be the answer. And that's important that the viewer sees that so that way they're motivated to contribute. What new features, item specials have you added recently? And you can even do a possible tour behind the scenes and introduce the employees so the community gets connected with that business because every time you order from this business, you're not just helping the business owner, but you're helping pay the salaries of all these people behind the scenes here. This is, this is a, you like this Tristan? Dude, I love it. Good stuff here, man. Wait, I got more. We're still in the first quarter. We got oh, already. Crap. All right. This. If the fire hose, baby. Wait, here. I already, I already snapshotted that, the one that you showed about having that webinar with the empty pictures of who you can have. You like that? I sent that to the team already. I'm Listen, like, hey, guys, we need, to get on this. we need to do this. Listen, I'll, I'll rent my team out to you, Tristan, for a small $2. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> So if you need some help, just let me know. I'm here for you, Tristan. I love, I love you. So good. All right. Here's another thing is COVID. So think about in the first quarter, maybe as this vaccine gets rolled out, maybe say, I don't know what's happening yet. I'm like trying to look into the future, but assuming that there's going to be some rollouts and locations, and maybe there's something that an agent can do to let people know, inform people, or perhaps hold a, another webinar about business and homeowner government relief. We just had a package signed. What does that mean to small businesses? And I know one of the questions that some businesses have, I've already got a, a loan. Can I get a second one in this package because I already burned through the first money? I still need some help. So there, maybe there's an informative webinar that you can do. We're up to the sure. second quarter. Second quarter, April, May, June, do some door knocking. Why not? It's getting a little warmer depending on where you are in the country. Um, so I'm not going to go into the dialogue. Don't forget about doing a newsletter that's customized based on the time of year. 
I encourage people to receive that updated market analysis. I know we touched upon it in the first quarter, but I think it's something that should be done again in the second quarter to get that message out. Offer the, I like, listen, Trish, we call it not the CMA. I tell my students to call it a neighborhood market report. It's the same thing. Oh. What I love about the language that we tell our students to use is so you can see it already. The, the, first of all, homeowners don't know what CMA means, market analysis. Everybody does that. But when you say neighborhood market report, it says exactly what it is in a deeper level. So that's what we like. Um, there's the free over the phone market analysis that they can promote to same concept, promote and advertise, just answer some questions. I'll tell you how much now, by the way, one more thing about over the phone, what you want to do is you, when you give them the CMA over the phone, you want to do a broad number, right? You don't want to give them the actual number. You want to do broad. Here's why. If it's broad enough, like, let's say your house is between 500 and 575. Well, that's a big spread, which is, well, I'd have to actually come see the house to, to figure out is the high and the low end. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. I find the time I come over, take a look at the property and while I'm over, I can actually drop off some of the report that I did. Can I go over six or seven would be better. So the purpose of this is make the phone ring, start building relationships, but eventually want to get in the door. Next thing is public and open houses. The nice, this is another marketing thing to do. Obviously, if you're an agent that don't have listings, make sure you ask an agent in your office, can I do an open house? Stream it on Facebook. Imagine if this is the kind of uh, turnout, whoops, that you have like this, and you're streaming it and you're taking photos. This is one of our students, Joanne. She had such a huge turnout. You know what I love about this, Tristan, mm -hmm. is when you see that kind of spread there, you see all these people waiting online to buy this house. It is such a great marketing thing to inspire other homeowners who are on the fence thinking about sound. Geez, this is a hot market. Yeah, there it is. It's right there in your face. Look at this turnout. And by the way, think about all the neighbors looking out the window saying, what the hell's going on at 1010 Hunter Hunter Lane? This is crazy stuff. All good marketing, these open houses like that. Uh, some other smile stops. Let's go back to that calendar. Let me zoom in on, let's see what kind of fun things we have for April, May, and June. Let's see. April is uh, a package of peeps candy and have any, have any peeps with real estate needs. Call me is the peeps that got it. <laughs> I like that <laughs> package of flower seeds. Thanks for helping me bloom. Your referrals are appreciated. This one's a little bit of a tongue twist to the Swedish, uh, candies. Uh, box of sweet, and it says it's officially summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked on happy clients. It's very cheesy. We, cheesy, you know, I've got it's good, it's memorable. Yeah, some of my team members they drink a lot, so they come up with these. Words. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happens in the middle of the night. They're like, hey, I got a great idea. That's right. Two o'clock in the morning, Julie's working. I got one, I got one. <laughs> Now, listen, you guys, uh, you know, and I, with our students too, we give them a lot of forms of flyers and checklists. So we tell them, listen, one of the things you can do is take some of this stuff and package it together. I'll give you an example. And you advertise a package. So for example, here's a buyer package. Here, contact me about the buyer package on how to buy a house in today's market. And in the package, you give them a loan checklist. You give them a flyer about if you're buying new construction, here's some tips. In a multiple offer situation, how do you deal with multiple offers? This is one of the e-guides we give our students. Uh, seven reasons to buy before the end of the year, which uh, we're coming to the end of that. A seller's package, you know, curb appeal on a budget, how to prepare your home for the fall and winter, which again, we're past these. I, I got to change these slides. Seller's package, uh, best looking house on the block, uh, seller's winter open house time of year. So these are examples of things our students have done to promote packages to buyers and to sellers. Interview your vendors, partners, right? So yeah. this is what you're so awesome at, Tristan, is interview. But so if an agent sat down and said, who are the people I'd recommend, whether it's insurance, mortgage, electrician, moving company, interior design, staging prep, all these people an agent can interview and have a whole series around this interview and it's things of value. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking really fast here. Feel free to interrupt me anytime, Tristan. No, I'm, you're good. You're doing good. If, look, if, if the audience has any questions, type them into the chat. We'll do our best to answer them in between. I know Jay had his hand raised. I wasn't sure if that was on purpose or not, but Jay, any questions you have, go ahead and, and uh, just chime yeah, in into the chat. Just chime in and, and Tristan will interrupt me. And uh, that's fine. Send out a community survey. Um, you know, you can use uh, 
uh, survey monkey. It's the one that we use in our company. I like this idea, sending out a survey to people that have these types of questions. You'll see why. Do you think real estate prices will continue to rise? What do you like best about your neighborhood? Uh, what do you think is the biggest real estate challenge that's hitting us in that may hit us in 2021? How long have you lived in your home? How much do you know how much your house is worth? If you were to move, where would you move to? Now, this survey to send out to a community, it could be in paper format or it could be, like I said, Survey Monkey. What's great about this is it gives you a sense of if there's anybody in the marketplace that's thinking about making a change, right? So yeah. um, it's good to get a sense of your community. Here's the third quarter. So we're up to the third quarter. Maybe I'm doing good on the time. Don't forget newsletters. If you're going to do those, they should be customized to the time of year. I love this one, Tristan. Hold a movie event. Um, let me share something with you. One of my students did this, um, Joanne Mills. And um, she, she, this is just a testimonial saying how great I am. So I'm going to skip this. <laughs> she, she said here, she did this, this recently, this drive-in movie theater. Actually, this was the one in June, but she did another one since then. So it was the Goonies. I just love the flyer. Oh. It looks beautiful, right? Best. And, and here's what she did. She had this incredible turnout. Julie, I keep forgetting. How many people did she have at her drive-in? I think she had 75 families, like 75 cars. And she put up a commercial before and after, and she handed out as people drove in. They got a, a goodie bag that had like popcorn and like Twizzlers, you know, like movie theater stuff. But it also had, obviously, it was branded to her. And um, you know, Tristan, when you go to when you used to go to movies and they had those 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 reels in the front, the commercials. So she had her yeah. own commercial up front while they're waiting for the movie to start. She took the microphone, did it a whole announcement. I mean, this is what does this have to do with real estate? Nothing except for the fact that. When you are a real estate agent, you take ownership in your community and you serve your community. And this is a way to serve them and bring them all together. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're basically bringing your farm into a parking lot and you get a chance to get to meet them, know them, talk to them. Now, there's a couple of ways. I'm going to get really technical for people who want to do this on them. So I'm going to give them an easy answer. This company over here, MLC, MPLC, you can pay a one-time fee, which is not expensive. I think it's like three, $400. And you have the rights to air uh, show movies without paying royalties. It's a one-time royalty fee as long as you're not charging ticket prices for it. Uh, another thing that you need to do is get an FM transmitter. What happens is you plug that into the projector and then it streams into people's cars. So their car radio is playing the movie from the projector. Um, now, here's what I did, Tristan, because some people don't want to do all that technical stuff. So what you can do is I Googled outdoor movie company to figure this out and you'll see a couple of people popped up. So everybody, and no matter where you are in the U S if you do this, you're going to find something local. And here's what happened. I found this company, Stargaze, and you'll look in the screen here. They do everything for you. They bring the movie screen, then the projected, then they get you the movie. You tell them what they give you a catalog. You decide what movie you want to use. If you want to add some popcorn or snoping, blah, 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 blah. So this is how Joanne did it. Joanne paid, I think it was $1,500 for the whole set. And she had two other sponsors who threw in $500 each. Bada mm -hmm. bing, $500, she did her own event. That's cheaper than if you did a mailing campaign. This is cool, yes? Dude, hold on. I want to take a picture of that one and post it into LapKids. Okay, all right, good. This is perfect. I love all this. Right. Hold on, let me snapshot it. I'm good. going to charge you $10 every time you take a screen. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> it's your team that's bringing up amazing stuff in the middle I'm of the night. They're like, they're like, Daryl, just, wake up. I'm just the front guy. Exactly. I, I, after this, I'm going to go back to bed and they wake me up. <laughs> and wake up. That's it. They just put the slides in front of me and I just talk. So All right. Here's the next thing is school. Support. So we're now in next quarter, third July, August, September. Think about school supply events. One of the things you can do is do some kind of fundraiser because again, we have people in need, and so you can uh, do something with another organization, or you can launch your own. But think about fundraising for kids, school, school supplies, Operation Backpack. This is a national organization. That's a, a, a group that you can get involved with and do a fundraiser in your, your local community, working with these people. Here's another one, the Goodies Factory. 
What I love about the goodies factory, and there's another one I'll show you, is if you wanted to create a fundraiser, they have its turnkey. They have the product for you. They have the order forms for you. They deliver the product for you. So you're basically the front end person. You're picking one of their products to do a fundraiser because some schools, they need this extra money. I'll give you an example of another company that does this. Seize Candy, same thing. Seize Candy, great, great delicious candy. Uh, they have a turnkey. You'll see in the second bullet, profits up to 50%. So you're, they're charging you 50% less basically for the product and you're making it on the upside. Here's another one, NEM's Pretzel Fundraiser. They've got a campaign turnkey with advertising, a checklist and how to do the whole nine yards. So you can do a fundraiser. Here's something else which is one of my favorites is sponsor school folders. Now in this day and age of, of virtual and a lot of kids, I'm assuming kids are gonna get back to school the next September. There may still be Zoom uh, uh, education for kids, but they're gonna be back in the classrooms. Yeah. And um, there is a, in most classrooms, do you have kids? You have kids, I know you do, Tristan. How old is your, your, your son? 14 and nine, my son's nine. You, and the other one is? is 14. Is, is, a, it's a female. she, it's a daughter? Yeah, female. Okay. Uh, I'll pray for you. Thanks. She's entering that age. I know. Yeah. I'm you're seeing it. You're seeing it. Oh, it's, yeah. You, you, you just, you got to be careful. You don't become an alcoholic because you're going to start. <laughs> anyway, so here's the, here's the thing. You, the, I don't, the, what the schools do is a, a folder usually with between the teacher and the parent. So on Monday, the teacher stiffs, stiffs, put, st stuffs, but <laughs> 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 My eye tooth got in the way of my tongue. I couldn't see what I was saying. Anyway, you put, they take the homework and they stuff it in a folder and it goes back and forth to the parent. So it's like some kind of intermail between the teacher and the parent. My idea is that an agent sponsors that school folder for a class or for the whole school. There are companies that you can actually get these folders. You can brand them, you can put a little sponsored by. What I love about this idea, Tristan, is this folder by, is being touched by parents five days a week for the whole school season. And you're the one that gave the gift of this to the school. I went to this website, Schoolmate, and I looked at how much do they charge. And you'll see, if you look at just the full color, now you see they, they'll design it for you too at the bottom. But let's say you don't design it. Let's say you design it versus them designing it. If you mm -hmm. look at 500 folders, that's 81 cents a folder, full color with your logo and everything on it. That's, man, that, that's the, the, and the shelf life, the shelf life on that kind of investment is off the hook awesome. So I love this idea, the school folders. That's a great idea. All right, wait, but wait, <laughs> there's, there's more. more. All right, so the smile stops. Let's look at the smile stops for this quarter. So let's zoom in on this. Here we go, a little fun over here. Let's see what Julie came up with. July, a box of sparklers with a note saying, wishing you a sparkling Independence Day. <laughs> like August is national, there's a, August 10th is National S'mores Day. I, I bet knew? you know that, Tristan. Who knew? Who I knew? I, I, listen, if it's sweet, I know. I know, because look at me, look at me. You see this, Tristan? Son of a... Anyway, pure, pure a, a muscle, rule, baby. what's that? Pure muscle, baby. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I go to the gym. Uh, ruler with the note that says, hope, hope the new school year rules in your home. Uh. That's what that says. Rules and get the ruler. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Hold, hold a how-to webinar now for buyers. We did one for uh, sellers, do one for the buyers. Not with my face, so that's just a sample of the flyer. Here's another one. Yeah. Now, what's great about this is you call it a workshop and you interview people like a home inspector, an attorney, termite, like those kind of things that buyers would be interested in. This is a great idea. Oh, let me go back. You'll see it says every 10 you enter to win a prize. One of these sponsors, like let's say it's a moving company, let's say it's the attorney, they can sponsor a colored TV or something like that and pool money together. So. There's another way to get your attendance up on those and they pay. I love that, dude. Uh, listen, I love this idea and that's a free ice cream event, right? What you can do is I, I, I Googled this, right? Ice cream on wheels is an example of a company. There's no other companies, it's just an example. What you can do is rent the truck. And essentially what you're doing is you're buying the ice cream wholesale 
and then you're giving it out to people. You're not selling it. You, you do a postcard mailing. You tell people I'm going to be in the area. Or if there's a community event, you get the ice cream truck, you put your wrap around it. And that's another idea to do to promote yourself and give back to the community and have some fun. I love this idea, Tristan. Spotlight top listings from your MLS. Let me share something I'm going to steal from Zillow, okay? <laughs> this is, you listen, because we, listen, they've been stealing for us for years, so let's give, give it back. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I'm never speaking for them. Okay, this over here is a sample of the, I cut and paste the email. I don't know if you get this these emails, Tristan, from Zillow. I do. The, the emails, listen, whatever we say, I know I was joking about Zillow. This is, I'm not really saying to steal it, but it's take the concept, okay, which is fine. It's What they do, and I love about this, is every periodically they send me this they email that says listings we love. And it doesn't matter where in the country it is, but what they do is they they give that that thing a name like for example the midwest sanctuary then the romantic tutor the storybook abode what i love about this idea trish what if an agent they took this concept where they spotlight listings from their local market and they give it a name and why is that listing so nice what's so powerful about that and push pushing that out like here's my top three, four, five listings of the month that I caught my eye and it might catch yours. Anyway, I just think that's a really great that's idea. That's really good. Yeah. I like that. And look, at the end of the day, people go to our websites to visit, to see what homes are there, right? What catches their eye or um, an amazing home they'd like to take a look at just because it's eye candy. So it exactly. makes a lot of sense. I like how you said that, eye candy. It's exactly what it is. All right, I'm in my last fourth quarter and I'm done. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So October, November, December. You know it, baby. Look at this. What does that say? Come on, Tristan. What does that say here? Trunk or treat, which was an awesome one that you did this last two months. I ago. love this Boy, idea, the trunk or treat one. For those of you that didn't hear, Tr Tristan and I did this a few months ago. I just learned about it uh, over a year ago, which is instead of people you know, going trick or treat, they go trunk or treat, which what you do is you get a parking lot and you have the community, they decorate their, their trunks and the kids go from trunk to uh, car to car in a parking lot. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the whole community and meeting in a parking lot and doing this event called Trunk or Treat. And there's so many, we got so excited about this, we created a whole marketing campaign that we give to agents on how to do a Trunk or Treat with the letters, with the flyers, with the checklist, the whole nine yards. And uh, so that's one of the gifts we give them. The other thing, and I really appreciate you supporting this, Tristan, is uh, we, we launched the first year, the Holiday Heroes Project. And what the Holidays Hero Project is, is it basically doing a food drive or a clothing drive or a toy drive. And what we did for uh, everybody is we created all of these marketing pieces. There's no opting in. The website that we have for this, you'll see it at the top there. It says holidayheroesproject.com. Tristan, anybody that goes to that website, there's no opting in. Like you, like you, we, I said to my team, I don't want people to write an email, uh, put an email address in order to get access to this. So when you get to this website, it's totally open, meaning you can download all of these things that we did. We did flyers, we did checklists, and we created a 40-page how-to operations manual on how to put together a holiday event. Now, what we're going to do, uh, we're excited about this, is we're going to launch a new uh, guide called the, uh, what is it called, Julie, again? I apologize. The Parking Lot Party Planner. In fact, I'm editing it today. One of the things that's I'm on my desk today is, is this planner. So that's on this week's. I love that. <laughs> so we're going to take the Holiday Hero Project concept and we're going to tweak it that you can use it for any holiday event. If they want to do a 4th of July event in your community, so it'll be the operations manual regardless. The bus or, you know, coats for kids or whatever. Right, exactly. So mm -hmm. these are some of the flyers that we created for these people. This is, and this is, they can just pl plug it in. So, okay. Next thing is uh, call and wish a happy holiday to see you. This is the time of year. You know, usually, Tristan, what people do is they mail out Christmas cards. The problem I have with mailing out Christmas cards, uh, holiday cards, Hanukkah cards, calendars the problem i have with that is if you don't do something the whole entire year 
it's almost like insulting. It's like, what? So now it's just a thing you do? Like, you don't know me. You haven't reached out to me all year. I, I feel this way about some of my relatives. I, I don't even, I don't know who the hell some of my relatives, they're mailing me cards. I haven't talked to them in years. I'm like, what the hell are you wasting a postage for? Pick up the phone. So anyway, I am passionate about if an agent, you shouldn't do that if you haven't been talking to them all year. So instead of that, if you are going to mail them a calendar or a post or a card, call them first because then it won't seem so like impersonal, right? So to hit your list, hit the phones beginning of December, just reach out, say, hey, I just want to miss you. Wish you happy. I hope the family's doing good. You need anything I'm here for, whatever. Then you send the card. All right. Volunteer and gather other volunteers and maybe do a soup kitchen. Like you don't have to do a whole big event. Contribute a day, get back to the community, gather up some people. I used to do something called a holiday. Uh, it was not holiday here. It was a holiday project. Went to nursing home. We gave out Christmas presents. I did that for like seven years. I gathered people together. It's good to do that kind of thing this time of year. Smile stops. Let's look at a smile stops. I'm zooming in over here, Tristan. All right. Pumpkin. You can give your farm area or your past clients a pumpkin carving kit with a note. Let's carve out some times to talk real estate. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, an apple pie, pumpkin pie. Hey, anyway, you slice it. I appreciate you. I love apple pie. I love apple pie. Do you really? It's All right, I got. I'm gonna send you something, Julie. I just remind me to send him a link to Gold Belly. This pie, this award-winning apple pie I got for the holidays. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to you, Tristan. Send it. All right, not the pie. I'm gonna send you the link. Send you buy yourself. Link. <laughs> buy yourself. <laughs> Listen, I ain't getting paid for this gig over here. I ain't buying you nothing. That's so good. All right. So the last thing I love this one is the wrapping paper with a little note. Thanks for helping me wrap up a great year, you know, cause that's, you can buy that for like, you know, $2 and 7-Eleven. So that's a good one. All right. So that's the calendar. That's the marketing calendar. I think that's, that's all I got for everybody, Tristan. And I can't believe I made it with five minutes to spare. You did, man. You did. I love it. All right. Let's see some questions here. We've got, uh, oh, Christopher just saying, I did that one in December, went amazing. Yeah. I, what I did he do? What did he do? He, I think he did the wrapping paper. Yeah, the wrapping paper. The wrapping paper? Yeah, that's, that I've seen before. And I, I think it's a big hit because it's very inexpensive and it works really well uh, because everybody's wrapping up things. Let me see if yeah, we got any questions. Yeah, that's a great little slogan, Facebook right? Stuff. It's a great slogan saying, thanks for helping me wrap up a great year. Yeah. Yeah, right, what else? My right, Swedish so, fish one, right? <laughs> can you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Swedish fish. I couldn't. I, I <laughs> had to read it three fish. times to understand what the hell it was. It's so fish. Carol, can you can you go over what what it looks like to belong to uh, the Power Agent Club or the back end? Because I joined last month, and it was like there was a lot of stuff I didn't even know you had back there, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, so here's what I'm gonna say. First of all, everybody that's watching right now, if you go to that website at the bottom, darylspeaks.com forward says trial, everything on the screen, you get in immediately and you get to keep. So if you get to decide to cancel during the trial period, you get to keep this, which is how to do a virtual listing presentation. It's an actual PowerPoint slide of 103 things. You get a video on how to do a virtual listing appointment. I, I got to tell you, I'm really proud, Tristan, of that customer, the e-guy, the top one that says customizable, multiple e-guy for buyers and sellers. What it is, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a guide that explains to a buyer and to a seller how to deal with multiple offers and the, and the agent can customize with their logo on. So it's a gift that you get and it helps you put your deals together. Okay, so I love that one that we create. Again, they keep this all for $5. Then if you're a new agent, how to get that started. Then there's the 12 best dialogues. There's how to set up a Facebook page. There's a breakthrough business plan at the bottom there. That's 43 pages. You and I did a webinar uh, recently on that. I taught from that. Plus a whole bunch of other stuff. And don't forget that $5, 100% of it's going to go to Feeding the, to, to America. So we're given, uh, so people can, when they do that, they're actually helping feed people. So I hope people will do that. This, I don't know. I don't want to spend time going through the rest of it, but you know, the power program, we do Monday coaching calls that are live. This is, uh, we have webinars on demand. We've got this Facebook closed group. 
Um, there's a power agent website. There's so much that's just incredible off this stuff. So anyway, people, here's what people should do. They should just do the $5 so they can see they'll they're onboarded. They get a phone call from me once a week, their hands are held for 30 days. You know, we want to obviously give them such a great experience that they stay as a power agent. So anyway, that's it. All right. A couple of questions. Oh, one, one comment, Barry saying outstanding content. Thanks to Errol, Tristan and your teams. So thank you, Daryl. And then Anonymous is saying, are all these items ours to download and keep? Yes. So there's a couple of things. Everything on the screen, which is worth almost 19, like if you try to buy it, that's what it's going to cost. You get to keep it for the $5. That's number one. Number two is everything that I showed in the webinar is from the power agent program. So you can download all that stuff, customize all the flyers. Our stuff is all customizable, Tristan. All the flyers, all the letters, everything. They plug in their stuff. It's we have over 500 pieces. You could you could run a webinar on all these pieces to to your audience as an agent. This is really good. Yeah. I like that. All right. Next question. Barb is asking, Daryl you now have your own crm rather than using the one you used to recommend is that correct no this is the um this is the one we've been recommending for power you have to be a power agent to have it it's the same one i'll t listen i'll be fully transparent tristan there's a company called exact contact is the oh, CRM. yeah yeah i know them i like so them. exact contact is the company that has the crm what we did is we contracted with them. We created Power Builder, which is we took their platform and we customized it. Where we took our 500 forms and flyers and put it in there. So mm. now agents can do mail merging and printing and perfect. Yeah, well, that's a great that's a great CRM. All right, Lisa. Last question: Is there a social media content packet inside of this? This is what you offer on the back end. Any social media items that they can use? Yes. Um, if I w went to the website now, which I won't, because I don't want to eat up the time. There is, we have what's called classroom. So when the power agent logs into the site, they go to classroom and there's all these alphabetical topics, buyers, prospecting, listing point. One of them is social media. When they go there, there's a plethora of social media posts that they can customize and then post out. So Yeah, really good stuff. And also when you join this, Daryl, and his team placed you into the Facebook group as well. And it's very active and a lot of good stuff goes on there. I copy some of his stuff and I post it into lab codes. So yeah, it's I, that I, good. I noticed that Tristan. Uh, you got, you're, mute, you're muted, Daryl. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. <laughs> you didn't hear me? The audio dropped there. Okay. Do you hear me now? No, no I still, yeah, I can't hear you anymore. Okay. Am I here? Can you hear there me? It is. All right. All right, we're good. Yes, I, I was making it. I was, oh, shit. I don't know what's happening while we're losing the mic. Um, maybe that's telling us something. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. I was going to say something that maybe I shouldn't. Um, I'm just kidding. So I'm so glad you're part of it, Tristan. I see when you like something, I get very excited. I feel like the president came into, into, the, into the thing and very excited. Are you still there? Did I lose you? He froze. He froze, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he froze. Okay, so it it is it is him. Hang on a second. Sh new share. Let me let me do this. Stop sharing. Okay, I think we might have lost Tristan, which is great because that means I can take over the entire <laughs> lab coat organization. So right now, if you're watching, it's because Tristan has sold lab coat to me. I am now the new owner. <laughs> Running a lab coat for y'all. So, Julie, do we have any more questions from no, our Barbara lab? Says thank you. Yeah, we get Lisa says thank you. I lots of thank yous. Um, All right, good. So thank you for being here. I think we. Well, Jake listen. going to cut us off now because you, you know. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it, right. it is about time. <laughs> it is about time. All thank right. You. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jake. Thanks, Tristan. See Happy you guys. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.